Hello everyone, welcome back to this uh, module where we are going to solve first order reliability methods using MATLAB that we started in our uh, last lecture. So, in this lecture we are going to continue that and uh, we will solve some more problems. In our last class we solved uncorrelated normal problems and we developed MATLAB code and solved 5 different problems to show you how you can develop a MATLAB code and solve uh, the same problem that we earlier did on pen and paper. Now, our next uh, problem that we are going to discuss today is when we have non-normal random variables. Now, earlier we discussed how to uh, uh, I mean, consider non-normal random variables in our first order reliability problem. In this uh, situation, what we do, we invoke a technique what we call equivalent normalization. So, uh, let us quickly brush up the mathematical model that we discussed earlier. So, if we have any arbitrary uh, random variable which is uh, described by its respective PDF, small PDF that you can see on your screen and uh, if we are at a particular uh, point x star, then at this point what we can do, we can design an equivalent normal distribution and for equivalent normal distribution we need to evaluate two parameters because normal distribution is uh, described by mean and standard deviation. So, that two parameters of the normal distribution we can evaluate using two equations that you can see on your screen. So, the first equation we have is based on small pdf. So, at the point x star we already know small fx of x star that is the pdf or the relative frequency of occurrence at this point and then we equate that with the uh, normal pdf and that you can see on your screen. So, this first equation uh, is based on the small pdf and similarly we can also equate capital cdf at the point x star. So, we evaluate this distribution given distribution which is non-normal and then we equate that with the capital phi that is the CDF of the normal distribution. Now, you can see on the right hand side of these two equations we have mu equivalent and sigma equivalent. So, these two parameters mu equivalent and sigma equivalent will give us an equivalent normal distribution which will offer the same magnitude of PDF and CDF at the point x star. Now, if you solve these two equations, we can get the values of sigma equivalent and mean equivalent that you can see on your screen. And graphically, what does it represent uh, is also shown here. Uh, so, what we have at the point x star, we have a arbitrary distribution. At this point, the y coordinate from the arbitrary PDF and the equivalent normal both of them are same and also on the left hand side the area covered by this PDF it is also same. So, that is the graphical representation of the technique we adopt for non-normal random variables. Now, because we design an equivalent normal uh, we call it equivalent normal approach or sometimes isoprobabilistic approach because in both of them uh, we as estimate the same amount of probability in terms of its PDF and CDF. So, for that uh, problem, uh, even if you recall, we discussed how to convert log normal distributions and all other distributions because mm, the formula that ha we have just developed for equivalent normal distribution, they are generic, any distribution we can fit in to this expression and find out mu equivalent and sigma equivalent. But for log normal distribution, uh, we can further simplify the distribution and we get some closed form expressions if you recall that we discussed in our earlier classes. So, if you have a log normal distribution as you can see on your screen, this log normal PDF is given by this fz of z that you can see on your screen and it has two parameters. These two parameters you can see uh, on your screen, they are related to mu z 
and sigma z that is sample mean and sample standard deviation and delta z this is the coefficient of variation and once we evaluate these two parameters we can also further simplify this expression for a small pdf and when we estimate capital cdf we can use um, normal distribution to evaluate cdf for log normal distribution now if we continue that discussion and design the equivalent normal distribution um, we can get a simplified expression that you can see sigma equivalent if we put all the expressions of uh, pdf and cdf on the right hand side we can further simplify and get a very handy expression that you can see x star sigma ln x and then similarly we can also evaluate mean equivalent and uh, that's the expression uh, for mean equivalent now when we have a log normal distribution then our main task first is to find out the two parameter of log normal distribution and then once we do that at a particular instant say x star we can estimate mu equivalent and sigma equivalent so this simplification is only possible for log normal distribution and these problems and how to handle that we have already discussed in our previous lectures today what we do uh, we are going to apply this to solve a few problem so uh, if we just quickly go through the algorithm so the real basic algorithm remains same so we start with a gx and then we convert that gx into gz and then once we have gz we find out uh, capital g that is the gradient vector and then we assume uh, beta and alpha and then once we do that we can evaluate z initial and once we do that one extra step we have when we deal with non-normal um, random variable so what we do at this z i that is the initial point we evaluate equivalent normal parameters so that's the extra step we have and once we do that we effectively convert all the non-normal uh, random variables into an equivalent normal random variable so once we convert uh, them into equivalent normal then we can continue our uh, algorithm and then uh, again what we do we express g uh, z uh, in terms of beta and alpha i and then we solve it and once we solve it we get the solution uh, of beta that's the roots and we find out the minimum root of beta and then using that again we evaluate uh, the direction cosines and based on the direction cosines and the new beta we evaluate the new design point and the iteration continues so what we'll do we will apply this algorithm and solve two different problems so the first problem says we have a cantilever beam this we earlier solved so today we are going to develop a matlab code and I will show you how to implement uh, this algorithm in MATLAB and solve this problem. So we have this steel beam which is having a point load at the free end and then we design at the support. So we have Fy times Z minus P times L. P times L is the moment developed at the support and we design against bending. So we have in this problem three different random variables x1 x2 and x3 so in this case x1 is nothing but fy x2 is z and x3 is the point load acting at the free end now this cantilever beam has a length of 2 meter and out of these three random variables x2 will follow log normal distribution so our task is to find out the reliability index for this case so let us start our matlab coding and see how we can develop a MATLAB code to solve this problem. So what we'll do, we'll first write a function file for non-normal random variables that we are going to convert it into equivalent normal distribution. So we have a function the output of this function is mean equivalent and sigma equivalent. So the two variables we define m underscore equivalent eq 
and s underscore equivalent eq that correspond to mean and standard deviation of the equivalent normal distribution. So, the function name we suggest equivalent norm and for that our input will be x star this is the point at which uh, we are going to evaluate the equivalent uh, normal distribution. So, we will give sample mean mn and then sample standard deviation and then we also use an id so that just by changing this id we can uh, convert different other uh, random variables um, into equivalent normal. So, uh, so let me just write the first one and then it will become clear. So, if my id is equal to 1, this is for normal. So, if we have a normal distribution, obviously, what will be my mean equivalent? It is exactly same. And what will be the equivalent standard deviation? It's also the same as we have already given at the input. Now, so if the id is 1, that means we have normal distribution. Now, if the id is say 2, this is for log normal and for that uh, first what we have to do if you recall we have to find out the log normal parameters based on sample mean and standard deviation that means we have mn and sd based on that we have to find out log normal parameters so first we find out delta x that is square root of log oh just sorry so first we calculate delta x so that is so first we calculate delta x that is the coefficient of variation now the coefficient of variation is the ratio of standard deviation and mean. So, once we evaluate coefficient of variation, then we can estimate the log normal parameters. So, the first one sigma ln x is square root of log delta x square plus 1. So, that is the first parameter and then the second parameter for the log normal distribution is mn exp minus s ln x square divided by 2. So, now we have the two parameters of the log normal distribution and then once we have these two parameters then we can estimate equivalent normal parameters that is mean equivalent and sigma equivalent. So, let us do that. So, the next task is to find out mean equivalent which is equal to xs that is the point at which we are going to evaluate the mean of the equivalent normal distribution. So, 1 minus log
access class log xp and then s equivalent is access star s l n x So this way we can uh, top up this function with other random variables but for only log normal distribution we can uh, have it in closed form. So now we have evaluated uh, mean equivalent and sigma equivalent at a point x star that we represent in this function file as x underscore s. Now, as I said, we can we can change the ID and then one by one we can add other uh, random variables. But uh, for the time being, let us just continue our discussion because we have normal and log normal distribution in our problem. So we save this function and then now what we have to do? We have to just change the form code that we developed. So in the last class we developed this uncorrelated normal if I show you. So this is the code that we developed in the last class. Now this code we can modify. We don't need to write down the complete code. We just need to modify this code uh, with the equivalent parameters. So for that what we do, let us save this as we have uncorrelated non-normal. So we have a new file and then here uh, we are going to modify. Now if you recall all these steps that will remain unaltered, the only thing that is going to change is after we have z initial that means here after we evaluate z initial, we have to estimate equivalent normal parameters. Now, that we'll do in a minute. So, we have z initial. So first what we do, we develop the design point that is the point in the x space corresponding to this z initial. For that what we do, we have the same transformation. So we transform x initial, sorry z initial into original space. Now, once we do that, we have to evaluate the equivalent parameter. For that, let us first define variables and initialize. So, we have a number of random variables. In this case, it is nrv, if you recall. So, initialize two variables corresponding to equivalent normal parameters. And then what we do? We again write a for loop to convert all these XSP that we have evaluated into equivalent normal. So at this point, we'll evaluate equivalent normal parameter. So what we have, we will use the function file 
that we have just developed. So the function file name is equivalent norm so the syntax says we have to define the point at which we estimate and then mean standard deviation and the id of the random variable so now we have xsp that is the point we are at which we are going to evaluate this equivalent normal parameters and we use sample mean and sample standard deviation of the random variables that we defined at the input and because we have to uh, use an indicator function so we use ind here so this is an indicator function that will tell us what is the type of the random variable at the input. So I will define this IND uh, at the beginning in a minute. So let us complete this for loop and then we will do that. So now what we have is uh, the equivalent normal parameters from this for loop. So we'll get all the equivalent normal parameters for the random variables that we uh, use to define the limit state. Now this indicator function you can see on your screen. So we have to define that. So after mean and standard deviation. So let us introduce this new function indicator and we also change this name that is non-normal. Okay. Now once we do that, we have the equivalent normal parameters and then obviously we have to evaluate direction cosines based on these equivalent normal parameters. So for that, I define the variables accordingly we did earlier. So that's my modified A matrix and then modified B matrix and then my X Z will be a mod star Z plus And then we don't need this uh, line anymore. So so what we do now, one small thing we have to do, we have to perform this substitution, not at the beginning, but once we have this modified estimate of um, mean and standard deviation using equivalent normal distribution. Now, once we do that, after this, after this conversion again, uh, once we substitute x with this xz where we have the modified values of uh, mean and standard deviation. So we again have to evaluate 
the derivative not here earlier but at this point after we find out gz so every time we have a design point then we have evaluated the equivalent normal parameters and based on that we actually convert gx to gz and then once we have gz we again find out gradient so this is the only difference from our earlier code and then now we save it so what we'll do earlier we had a main file so it was test uc normal so let me save it in a different name so today we have non-normal distribution so let us save it and then all these initial values of beta tolerance number of iterations all of them will remain same so we don't need them now we have to define the main file now for that what we have to do we have to first call the limit state function so we have a file called limit state now in this limit state we add one more limit state corresponding to the problem so the problem statement says our limit state is gx x1 x2 minus x3 times l so let me see if we have this earlier then we can use it or otherwise we have to um, write this limit state again so we do not have it although we used a very similar limit state earlier the in the first problem so now the limit state id in this case is 6 we have everything same but we have three random variables so x3 Similarly, we have to introduce Z3. And then we have X3 times L. So L is 2 meter. So 2 times X3. So that's the limit state we have. And the limit state ID is 6 corresponding to the problem what we have. Now, in the main file so let us define the problem so we have limit state id 6 and then we have to define the mean and standard deviation so let us do that So the mean is 2.5 E 5 1.2 E minus 3 100 and then standard deviation we have 2.5 E minus 4 sorry it's plus 4 then 6 e minus 5 and then 15 and then in this case we have to define an indicator function and because we have three random variables out of that first one is a uh, normal so in the equivalent normal code we have id 1 for normal and id 2 for log normal so similarly we define here so 1 then second random variable is log normal so it is 2 and the third one is normal and then we also define indicator function here because we have to call the non-normal code 
So that completes the coding part. And so let us run this. There is some syntax error. So what we have here is mean underscore n. So let us save it. Okay, so the problem is solved. So in this case, we have uh, used three iterations. You can see on your screen. So after third iteration, uh, we have the converged values of beta. So the values of beta is 2.2534 and the corresponding PF is 0 0.0121. And the design point also we have evaluated we have to design the beam at this point where we'll have first failure. So that's the design point for this problem. Now uh, we can change the order. So instead of second variable as log normal, we can change the order. We can consider the load to be log normal and see what is the difference in beta. So the problem that we had earlier where the sequence is normal log normal and normal we have 2.2534 but if we change that sequence and consider the load to be log normal and then you can see the beta is changed if you have all the variables are log normal that also we can check and then we can estimate the reliability index and uh, corresponding probability of failure and the design point. So, uh, the problem shows how to solve the first order reliability problem when we have non-normal random variables. Of course, at this point, we have uncorrelated non-normal. We will relax those assumptions and we will see how we can proceed further in a minute. But before that, let us solve one more problem. So in this case, we have uh, a GX that you can see on your screen in problem number seven. So in this case, we have uh, a problem with four different random variables and their mean and standard deviations are given. And uh, it is said that out of these four random variables, X1 and X3 follow normal distribution while X2 and X4, they have log normal distribution. So it's very simple. So what we have to do is first we just write this limit state function. So limit state id is 7 in this case. We have four random variables. So we introduce x4. Similarly, we also introduce z4. And then uh, we have the expression for gx that is So the limit state is added in the limit state function and then in the main file we have to define the parameters. So let's do that. So we have mean values are
22.67, then 16, then E20, and then 5E6. And the standard deviations, you can see it is five point four four, then five point three two. Sorry, that is five and thirty two, and then the last one is one point five. E six. So that's the problem statement, and the sequence is first and third are normal, and second and fourth are log normal. So the complete problem statement is defined in the MATLAB code. So let us run it. So you can see the algorithm takes again three iterations and in fact if you recall uh, this I discussed earlier so if your initial guess is uh, very close to the MPP then uh, you need less number of iterations otherwise it will converge but it may take a uh, longer time. So in this case again we have three iterations and after third iteration we have a probability a failure is 8.1645 into 10 to the power minus 4 corresponding to a beta of 3.15. So we started with a beta of 3, uh, you can see very close to 3.15 and so we have a quick convergence. And the design point also you can see uh, we have in this case. Now that completely solves the problem when we have non-normal random variables. So that's the first part of today's lecture. We have solved for non-normal random variable. Now, if we continue our discussion, so our next problem when we have correlated random variables. Now, this again we discussed earlier. So, for correlated random variables, uh, again our basic algorithm remains same. The only additional step we have to introduce is an eigen analysis at the beginning just to uncouple the correlated random variables. So if you have correlated random variable, in this case x, uh, which are correlated, so x1, x2, x3 up to xn, these variables are correlated. So we define this Cx matrix, covariance matrix and Earlier we discussed how to uh, uncouple this using a transformation x equal to vy, where v is the eigenvector of the Cx matrix. And the original algorithm is slightly modified. We introduce one extra intermediate random variable y in this case. So we first convert x into y. So x is a correlated space then y we have which represents an uncorrelated space and then from y we again convert the limit state into z space that is the standard normal space. Now because we have a, an intermediate step obviously for the random variables y we have to find out its uh, properties so in this case again mean and standard deviation so we have evaluated mean using variance algebra you can see on your screen so from the mean of x we can estimate the mean of y similarly from the eigen analysis the eigen values that we get that will give us the variance corresponding to the new random variables which are defined using this vector notation y so that's the intermediate step we have so again the algorithm goes like this once we have the problem statement defined first we do an eigen analysis we uncouple the space defined by x 
and then we get a new space y. So we convert gx first into gy and then gy to gz. So that's the only modification we have over the original Rackwitz algorithm. And then let us consider again two different problems. So the first problem again is a cantilever beam. Similar type of problem we have already solved. In this case, we have two different point loads, one acting at the free end and the second one is acting at the mid span. Now the design philosophy remains same. The only thing is, in this case, applied moment is due to the first load P1 and the second load P2 acting at the middle. And these two loads, P1 and P2, they have a correlation coefficient of 0.6. So that's the first problem. But please notice that all the random variables are normal in this case. So let us develop a code for this problem and see how we can solve and find out the answer. So we don't need equivalent normalization because we have all random variables are normal. Now, what we'll do, we'll again use the same original code you see normal and we'll modify this code. So in this case, we name it correlated normal. So C underscore norm. Now, when we have a correlated case, then instead of sigma, so you provide directly CX matrix. Now, the moment we define CX matrix, so the first step after we get the limit state information is we do an eigen analysis. So the command is EIG of CX matrix. So once we do that, we'll get eigenvectors capital V and the and a matrix whose diagonal will give us variance. We have an intermediate variable. So let us find out its properties. Now we can see this capital Y, which is an intermediate random variable. So we have to define that and that will define in the limit state file. So we also have to convert GX into GY first. So we have to substitute gx wherever we have x that we convert to y and then we have to find out the mean So we change this variable in the x space we have mx and then we get the mean value mu and then 
sigma which is square root of the diagonal of lm so that gives us sigma so we have mean and uh, sigma then we have this nrv that is the length of x vector to identify how many random variables we have and then we have a matrix then b matrix and then gz we have to get it from gy so we have already defined gy so wherever we have y we have to replace it with yz so let me check where we have yz so this will be my yz so that completes the algorithm remaining part of the calculation remains same so let us save it and then once this is done what we have to do in the original limit state file we have to now define the random variable so let us use this sixth limit state because they are almost similar so let me change it to eight and then we have four random variables in this case so we have now y1 y2 y3 and y4 in z space also we have to introduce one more random variable so we started with x then we have a intermediate random variable y all of them we have to change it to y and then here also we have to pass this new random variable So that completes the definition one extra thing remaining is the limit state so we have in this case uh, x2 x1 x2 minus x3 times l so we have x3 times l and then x4 times l by 2 so in this case it will be minus 0 0.5 star 2 star x So that completely defines the limit state and the main file also let us save it in a different name so this is correlated normal and we have to define excuse me the properties of the random variable so in this case we, it is 8 so the mean is 2.5 e5 then 1.2 e minus 3 then this is 60 and another load is there and that is 70 standard deviation also 2.5 e4 6 e minus 5 then this is 9 and then 10.5 we don't need the indicator function but oh one thing we have to do we have to instead of sigma 
we also have to define the covariance matrix. So what we have here, the first covariance is square of this then only the third and fourth random variables that is x3 and x4 these two are correlated so in the covariance matrix this will be all zero And then the correlation coefficient is 0.6. So it will be 0 0.6 star. And the last row will be 0, 0, call the function file we have to define accordingly so our case it is c norm and then everything is defined okay so let us check once more before we run so i've defined sigma one square and then 2 square, sigma 3 square. And then here you have the correlation between 3 and 4. Okay, so let us see. So here there is no need for indicator function. So this is not required, which we had from the previous case. Okay. So again, we need three iterations. And at the end of three iterations, we get beta, which is 2.6615. And PF is 0 0.0039. And we also have the design point. Now, this gives you an idea how to solve correlated normal case. Now, we can change this correlation coefficient. So, if it is say 3.5, sorry, 0.35 and then we can estimate what is the change in beta. So, you can change the correlation coefficient and then we can study. We can have negative correlation also. But once we develop the function files, then solving different problem is much easier. So, the first problem for correlated cases solved. Let us see the second problem you can see on your screen. So, in this case, we have a g x y. There are two different exponential functions and the correlation coefficient between x and y is 0.35. So, let us solve this problem. First, we define the limit state. So, we have x and y. So, let me copy it first. And then we'll modify limit state id is 9 we have 
two random variables. So we need two intermediate random variables and two random variables in the Z space. Now we define the limit state function. So in this case, it is exponential of 0.4 times x plus 2. So in our case, x1 plus 2 and then plus 6.2. So this plus 6.2 and then minus exponential of 0.3y plus 5. So here we have minus exponential of 0.3y, so in our case x2 plus 5 and then finally minus 200, so minus 200. Fine, so the limit state is defined in the main file, let us define the properties of The random variables. ID is 9 and both X and Y are in standard normal space. So we have 0, 0. We can directly define CX matrix. So let us do that. So this will be 1, then 0 0.35, then 0 0.35, 1. So let us run it. So we have after third iteration, we have the design point and then the beta is in this case 3.0587 and the PF is 0 0.0011 and the corresponding design point also you can see on your screen. So that gives you complete idea how to write the code for correlated normal variables. Now, we have one last case remaining and that is when we have correlated non-normal. Now, for this problem, we have developed all the uh, mathematical models. The only thing in the algorithm is we have to first uncorrelate the random variables because variables are correlated. So, we start with x space, then we define the CX matrix. Just now we have solved the problem, but that time we solved correlated normal. Now, in this case, we have correlated non-normal. So, we combine all of them and that's how the logic goes. So, we start with CX matrix, do an eigen analysis, then convert GX into GY. We find out the properties of GY and y, that is the mean of y and uh, standard deviation of y. And then we continue the iteration. And because we have non-normal random variables, at the initial point, we evaluate equivalent normal and then continue the solution. So, we will modify the algorithm where we will incorporate all those changes we have made. So, we are going to solve this problem. Here we have a, again the same cantilever beam and the limit state is defined by x1, x2 minus 1140. This problem we solved earlier for other cases. And now uh, let us uh, solve the same problem where we have correlated non normal distribution. So, as you can see on your screen, 
The second random variable x2 is following log normal distribution and the two random variables are correlated with the correlation coefficient of 0.4. So let us solve this problem. For that, we have to develop the code, but in this case, we don't have to write a new code because all the components are ready. So uh, that's what I have already prepared. So you can see we start with the covariance matrix and the function file in this case is C. C stands for correlated case and then non-normal. So we start with the eigen analysis of CX matrix. Then the moment we do that, uh, we convert the X space to Y space. And for Y space, we find out the mean and standard deviation. Now, the moment we go to Y space, because the problem is now uncorrelated, but still non-normal. So we have to convert it into equivalent normal space. And that's what is done here. So we call this EQ underscore norm. And then one by one, each uh, variable, we convert it into equivalent normal. So we evaluate two parameters, mean equivalent and sigma equivalent. And then once we do that, finally, we convert the Y space into Z space and all other calculations remain same. So the main function file is ready. In the limit state file, this uh, random variable x1 and x2 that defines the limit state x1, x2 minus 1, 1, 4, 0 uh, was earlier used. The only modification we have is the introduction of the intermediate random variables y1, y2. Okay, so in the main file, we define the parameters of the random variable. So mean is 38 and 54. And because we have correlation coefficient, so we define covariance matrix and that you can see on your screen. So the covariance matrix we estimate from the standard deviations of individual random variables and the correlation coefficient. Finally, because we have non-normal random variable, the first one being normal in the indicator function, we use one because that corresponds to normal distribution and two, the second random variable uh, is log normal distribution. So when we'll call equivalent normal, it will execute accordingly. Now let us solve this problem and see what is the result. So let us run it. So you can see this time it takes nine different iterations and after ninth iteration, the solution converges and we have reliability index as 2.6757 and corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.0037. And after we achieve convergence, we get the design point. You can see on your screen, the design point in this case is 47.9198 and 60.5895. So with this problem, uh, you get complete idea how to solve the most general case where you have correlated and non-normal random variables using rackwitz fisler algorithm. So with that, let us close this lecture today. In the next class, uh, we'll continue this discussion on how to solve first order reliability methods using uh, MATLAB and finite element method. Thank you.